Hello and welcome to our exhibition, Furnishing the Empire. We're Christopher Clark Antiques. And there's the exhibition catalogue. But let's have a little bit of a walk around and just point out a few items of interest. We've got a number of different campaign chests in this exhibition, 12 in all, and everyone stands out for one reason or another. This is an interesting one by the Tottenham Court Road retailers, Maples. Interesting because it's got fiddleback mahogany veneers to the top and in between the drawers. We've got um, an Ilkley couch by Robinsons, uh, dated 1874. And with it, sold separately of course, we've got a table which completely dismantles and it's for reading or writing or working. You can't really see it in the window, but a very unusual serving table, very bold legs which unscrew, good naval chair. Here's another interesting campaign chest and rare to survive, not only with its patent case cupboards, but patent case cupboards that have got mahogany fronted doors. And behind the shelf here, is the two parts of the, the chest. So they'll be removed, made up into a separate piece of furniture, giving you two pieces of furniture. Very good 1760s Georgian table. And um, it folds halfway down the leg. You've got a knuckle joint here. And that follows a design of 1771 uh, after Anthony Eckhart. A few different folding mirrors on top of it. Anglo-Indian decanter boxes. We see lots of English decanter boxes. Not very many Anglo-Indian ones. Good painting of Carlisle Castle, done by the surgeon of the 48th Regiment, James Young. A picnic table containing two benches. 1885 patent by Walter Thornhill of New Bond Street. Now, what every good officer knows is hygiene is very important. And if you wanted a thunder box or portable commode, well, you're not really going to find a better one than this. The quality is just absolutely superb. It retains its original silver plated bucket and its porcelain liner. Not just a thunder box, but also a B day. But of course, these work very well now as little side tables. Let's just step into the other room. There's a couple of very good chests by interesting makers. So this mahogany chest with a superstructure cupboard is by Samuel Levy. And if you just take a quick look at those drawers in there, very unusual, not your usual interior for a secretaire. And they're actually lined in silvered paper and were probably for taking something like tea. At the back, we've got um, an excellent chest by Gregory Kane of Dane Street, Dublin. And the whole of the superstructure of that is made to fold down. We've already done a video on that, which you can find. A rum barrico used by the Royal Navy in the distribution of rum to the sailors. So let's take a step back into the main showroom again. So we've got three campaign pieces, all from Goa and very interesting. If you just look at the panel door there, and also this three parts chest over here, you can see it's very distinctive and we can see the Portuguese influence of the region. These two chests, one secretaire, one with linen slides and drawers, are very likely from the same workshop, first half of the 19th century. Fantastic quality and very good brassware. But what we've also got just here with the same panelling on the doors, much later and not as good quality, but 
The distinctive panelling tells us it's from the same region, also from Goa, and that lifts off its stand a little portable campaign cupboard. Two little footstools with removable legs and their original needlework. Major Armstrong's trunk. And of course he was famous for being involved in the Battle of Bossenden, fought by many to be the, bar the last battle on British soil. Very good campaign furniture, uh, campaign sofa. Back, arms, made to bolt off, to dismantle, pack down for travel. A little specimen side table from the West Indies. Folding music stand. Uh, we've had a few of these in the past. This is the first one that I've seen which is stamped with a retailer's mark, Keith Prouse. Very intriguing little box. Um, which would have been used probably by a coin collector. Lots of different trays in there to take the coins. We've got some interesting paintings as well, mostly Victorian. Mutton chops very much in vogue. Henry Holbrook here. Um, interesting to get a painting of a non-commissioned officer. Reginald Augustus Weimer, around about 1900, but showing Grenadier Guards, circa 1829, outside Windsor Castle. We've got some very interesting boxes as well, aside from the coin box. Um, interesting large boxes. This is a pigeonhole box, probably for distributing the mail to the soldiers and the officers. This one's number three, so it probably would have been a few different ones of these. But also an interesting secretaire box here which folds down and that's got secret drawers to it as well. And another interesting box containing six drawers, all lettered. What the letters stand for, not quite sure, but uh, there must have been a good reason for it. Very nicely made box as well. One of the best um, China trade and Boiner campaign chests you're likely to see on the market with a secretaire, cupboard to the top with interior drawers, uh, lion's paw feet, just fantastic quality. And we've also got, uh, as part of our 12 chests, we've got four early chests, all of them around about 1820 in date, but they're very interesting from an academic point of view because they show us the transition from the domestic chest into the campaign chest and what the makers, the cabinet makers, were trying to work out the best way to do it. So some of them are one part, some of them are two parts. They've all got flush handles. Mostly they've got overhanging moulding, but they've tried to keep it to a minimum. They couldn't get rid of it completely. They wanted it to be a little bit fashionable to the day. But all four chests are very interesting the development of a campaign chest from a domestic chest to a brass cornered two-part chest that we recognize today as a campaign chest. Another interesting box this time by Jenna and Newstub and this is an ABC dispatch box and as you can see the interior has got a good filing system, another little lift out tray all sorts going on in there um, and would certainly keep you organised. Florence Nightingale, very naive folk art carving of Florence Nightingale. We can date to around about 1910. She's got a medal on and after her name it says OM, which stands for Order of Merit. 1910 was when she was awarded it. And back to where we started um, with a Huanghui Chinese export cabin table, but also it's a washstand. A bowl would have fitted in here. 
you've got a mirror to the interior which fits in there another flap which can come up and a patent ships chair by Crookchan. Um, interesting design, a little bit unusual to most of the chairs that you see. So that's a very quick roundup of furnishing the Empire, our latest exhibition. If you go onto our website, um, go online, campaignfurniture.com, you'll see that there's plenty of photographs of all of the items, nice long descriptions, and we're adding videos to each piece as we go along during the exhibition week. So I hope you've enjoyed that quick introduction to our exhibition.